Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Shane Narrator. Have you ever been at a loss for cool topics? You're on that first date, you're meeting some new friends or coworkers, you go through those pleasantries of saying hello, asking how they're doing, gosh, those are the worst, and then you just kind of stand around for a while. Well, I'm here to help rectify the problem. You see, I love learning new things, and a corollary of that is I love learning a bunch of random new things. The internet is rife with all sorts of weird and wacky information. Most most of us have but scratched the surface. So one of the things that I do in my dripping spare time is I just research a topic. I just Google it, see what articles pop up, YouTube videos, Reddit threads, MySpace profiles, and just see what I can learn about the topic. And oftentimes, researching that topic will lead to other topics. So fun fact, I was actually just gone for 20 minutes eating some Costco pizza that someone had brought over and spilled some sauce in my pants. But it didn't seem that way to you because the power of movie magic makes it seem instantaneous. Jump cut! So anyways, the point of this series is to help you become more informed and hopefully have a little bit of fun as we go down the rabbit hole together. Now today's topic is very near and dear to my heart. Every time I go to a restaurant, there is one thing that I have to check to see that they have. It's a new dish, came out fairly recently, not a whole lot of people know about it. Mac and cheese. Now I got to thinking, there's not a whole lot I know about this meal. I know that it's good, but not very good for you, broadly speaking of course, and I'd love to know a little bit about the why. So join me friends on this quest to find the origins of Mac and cheese. Okay, so. When it comes to new searches on the internet, Google is probably the first place I'd recommend to start. I mean, you can use DuckDuckGo, you can use Bing, whatever suits your fancy. But let's stick with Google. So I think the first thing is, <laughs> it's ironic that we're going to be researching a food that is not known for its nutritional value. And yet, there I am searching about Planet Fitness and my new gym membership. So let's go ahead and type in a little bit about mac and cheese. Um, how about mac and cheese? History. I think that would be a good place to start. Ah, and we have a beautiful editorial from the Smithsonian. Would that be known as an editorial? I don't know. So let's go ahead and look at... Mm, let's learn a little bit more about this. The earliest known recorded mac and cheese recipe was scribbled down in 1769. Holy moly, Batman. That's a long time ago. So it looks like the article came out in 2011, which at this point is nine years old. So probably not super credible. Just kidding, it's the Smithsonian. So it says here that the exact origin of mac and cheese is unknown. Well, that ends the video. No one knows. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Staple of American cuisine, the creamy combo made its way to the United States courtesy of Thomas Jefferson. What a really cool resume to have, you know? Like, after his tenure as third president of the United States, he could go to employers and be like, yo, I was president, one of the founding fathers, but most importantly, I helped spearhead mac and cheese in this country. And the employers would be all like, you're hired. As president, he served macaroni and cheese at an 1802 state dinner. I would love to see the patent for mac and cheese. You know what? Let's do that right now. Mac and cheese patent. There's our friends at Smithsonian. Guess they are the go-to experts on all things mac and cheese. Then there is one for patents. Let's uh, let's click through and see what happens. Really hope it's like a Rube Goldberg machine of some sort where it's just got a bunch of pulleys and gadgets that dispenses like two mac and cheese noodles. Whoa, what is this? What is going on? It appears that mac and cheese is a lot more sophisticated than we initially thought. Three liter feet is needed for an aisle for refilling supplies. This seems to be a lot more than just mac and cheese. I suppose I should have read into the title a little further, but it looks like this is talking about a prepackaged meal of Fortified mac and cheese. So this must be the premium stuff. I kind of like to think of mac and cheese at this point, sort of like different tiers. It's like when you buy different octane ratings of gas, like you got your 87, the 89, and the 93. I'd like to think of fortified mac and cheese as being the equivalent of octane ring 93. 87 would be more like whatever the opposite of fortified would be, like sapped, prostrated, prostrated mac and cheese. That just sounds horrible. So, um, <laughs> My gosh, we were going down the rabbit trail. So this patent includes a bunch of other things, such as rice and beans, which is not relevant to our search. It took us a whole five minutes to come to that conclusion. So let's backtrack. I'm a little disappointed. I wonder if there's an actual patent for mac and cheese. Maybe the images will yield a different result. You guys, anyone remember the shapes? This looks like the SpongeBob mac and cheese shapes. I used to love the heck out of shaped mac and cheese. They just, 
they just taste better. And that's facts. Ah, oh, yes. I've been staring at these for 15 or so seconds. Just a wave of nostalgia just washing over me like a tidal wave. I'm not really seeing a patent. Patent? 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 I'm not seeing a patent for mac and cheese in here. So I guess that is not a thing that we can easily dig up in the archives of the internet. Bummer deal. But that's okay. Let's go back to original article in Smithsonian after searching through like seven different tabs to find out if there is a patent for mac and cheese. So far we've learned that Thomas... Edison, Thomas Jefferson, was the one who helped spearhead bringing mac and cheese to the United States. But it looks like it also had its origins in Northern Europe, which I guess isn't too far off from Italy. So if I were a betting man, and if I take Italian food stereotypes and sort of superimpose them on the country of Italy, I'm imagining that this noodle-based meal maybe came from Italy. That makes sense, right? To confirm my suspicions or make me out to be a complete failure at predicting the future. So <laughs> Kraft Foods introduced its box macaroni and cheese in 1937 when America was in the throes of the Great Depression. Throws is such a dope word, but I'll be perfectly honest. Not 100% sure what it means. Intense are violent pain and struggle, especially accompanying birth, death, or great change. Yikes. So in 1937, it was introduced when America was in the throes of the Great Depression. The product could serve four for 19 cents, and the company sold 8 million boxes of its quick and easy macaroni and cheese in a year. I cannot remember the last time anything cost 19 cents. I can't even remember anything that cost less than a dollar because as we all know, Dollar Tree is a scam. Even though they claim to be a dollar for everything, they don't mention the tax. Scoundrels. Wow, look at that. Apparently enough people have searched the term 19 cents that it actually shows up as the fifth line item for most searched in this algorithm. I guess we're not the only ones that is interested in that specific amount of money in 1937. Looking at retirementsimulation.com with a very relevant ad for yoga wear, it looks like inflation for 19 cents was $3.48. So that means even by today's denomination and currency, mac and cheese was worth a pretty penny. So the company sold 8 million boxes of its quick and easy macaroni and cheese in a year. With rationing in effect during World War II, the box mix continued to gain in popularity. The Kraft Dinner has its tone in Canada. If there's any Canadian viewers out there, did you ever ask your mom for the craft dinner. Please leave a comment confirming that this is true. So the craft dinner is a mainstay of college student cuisine and it's hyperlinked and you know what that means. We gotta click it. Inviting writing college food. Okay, I'm not seeing a whole lot in here about mac and cheese. I'm gonna try to stay on topic, which as you notice is not the easiest thing. Control F, mac. Okay, so we have three hits it looks like. I kicked up vast quantities of mac and cheese. The other two results go to Macacax at the top of the rock. I am so sorry if I'm butchering that pronunciation, zoologists. And Philip of Macedon. So this article literally has like nothing to do with mac and cheese. That's all right. We had to find out for ourselves anyway. Some chefs are take, taking back the mac. That reminds me of a story. Back in my years as an Olive Garden server, I don't know what accent I was going for there. I served many tables a variety of different dishes. So like fettuccine alfredo, spaghetti with meat sauce, a carbonara. But then one day I had a younger couple that sat down at my table. And it was funny because you know, start off relatively normal. The girl there got like a Coke with like chicken marsala, the average stuff. And then I turned to the gentleman and asked him what he wanted to order. And he was like, do you do, do you, uh, you serve mac and cheese? He was keeping his voice low. Like he didn't want anyone to know. And I was like, yeah, of course we, we serve that, but it's, it's on the children's menu. Can I, uh, can I get that in an adult portion, please? That was a pretty weird request. You want small shales mac and cheese and your girlfriend here is getting freaking chicken marsala? Are you 10 years old? That's what I wanted to say. But what I actually said was, of course, sir be happy to help. Definitely one of the orders that like left an impression on me. So we learned a little bit about the history of mac and cheese. Um, so that was interesting. Why don't we broaden the topic a little more and just search mac and cheese and see what the heck pops up. So we are seeing, no surprise, a lot of different recipes for the dish. <laughs> it's funny. It's like every single one of these are claiming to be the best. It sort of reminds me of like that one scene in Elf where Buddy played by Will Ferrell, he like bursts into the store and is all like, you did it. Congratulations. World's best cup of coffee. Like everyone has that claim to fame, but in this view, they're all the they're all the best. Like, what do you pick? Let's click through a few of these. The very first one, the best homemade mac and cheese. Oh my gosh, outrageously cheesy, ultra creamy, and topped with a crunchy panko parmesan topping. Wow, I'm already sold. You can't deny how good that looks. You know, I, I could spend all day looking at mac and cheese pictures. It's funny, this, this whole blog post seems to be going into like everything but the mac and cheese. Talking about the pasta maker attachments, the stand mixer that she uses 954 times each week. I don't even know if I'd use that in my entire lifetime. But 
man, it sounds pretty dope. I mean, look at this. There are 10 hub powered attachments, including a spiralizer. Now what the heck is a spiralizer? Sounds like some sort of weapon that you would use in like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Let's see what this video says. I'm very Come interested. Use the manscape. After this As manscaping ad. Everybody, today I'm gonna to be showing off three spiralizers. Let's start with the bad news. I got one handheld spiralizer and I just <sighs> Honestly, I couldn't ever get it to work. So no, it's supposed that's, to work that's, that's terrible. To I honestly could not get it to work. Don't recommend a handheld spiralizer. Okay, I hope so. you all are taking notes. You're going to be quizzed on this at the end of the video. Awesome. Oh, okay. <laughs> I get it now. It's a spiralizer because it spins. <laughs> it's kind of mesmerizing in a way. Yeah, so this is just the biggest blog post on like all the tools you need for mac and cheese. So there's the recipe. Uh, 26 pages down, we finally get to the recipe for the mac and cheese. But it's ranked at the top of SEO. So apparently this blogger is doing something right. Let's go to listing number two. Easy homemade mac and cheese stove top. This easy homemade mac and cheese recipe is made with eight ingredients in 15 minutes on the stove top, no baking required. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the description of the mac and cheese in the other blog post just sounded a lot more scrumptious to me. But, you know, as far as mac and cheese goes, that does look pretty good. I'm bouncing out of that one pretty quick, though, because there is no spiralizer, and that's what really engages my interest. That's the way to my heart. It's a spiralizer. I've always said that. Let's look at one more just, just for funsies. Is this the best mac and cheese? Tune in next week and find out. Homemade mac and cheese. 2,455 ratings. This is a nice, rich mac and cheese. Hope you enjoy it. Aw, what a wholesome call to action. <laughs> I've got to see what some of these reviews say. So Julie says, very creamy and yummy. If you think your sauce is too runny before pouring it over the macaroni, it's not. <laughs> I was very nervous that my sauce was not thick enough, but once I poured over the macaroni and baked it, the dish turned out wonderful. Let's go to the next review. Julie Olson again. Julie, you're cheating. You can't have two reviews back to back. You are hijacking the system. And I think we need to report you to uh, whatever overseeing government agency handles this sort of thing. Okay, let's see if there's a way to look at like negative reviews because those are always fun. Let's see, uh, we have least positive. Yes, I am so excited about where this might go. <laughs> what the heck is that? Look at it, look at it, <laughs> it looks so bad. It looks like applesauce stuck to the edges of the pot. Horrible, sauce never thickened, have made this and this was the worst. Vague instructions, zero out of 10. <laughs> Oh, I love this. Okay. Not what I expected. Well, at least Audrey was direct and to the point. Maria Fora says, grainy. Perhaps I packed the Parmesan cheese too much. I am no mac and cheese expert, clearly. You never want to just like pack down the mac and cheese like you're you know, like you're kneading dough. It's going to be like dashed on, sort of like salt bay style. You know, you just kind of dash a little bit on top. And I think that's what you were missing. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. This recipe was very bland, says Amberg258. I followed to a T and was certainly not impressed. My grandmother's is by far much better and looks like she has one like, which is very likely her grandma. Again, these people cheating the freaking review system. You know what, Amberg258? You should post your grandmother's recipe and let us be the judge. Okay, thank you for indulging me. That was great fun. Let's actually look at something a little more informative for mac and cheese. I'm going to say let's do one more historical article on mac and cheese and just sort of see if there's any other gaps in knowledge that the Smithsonian did not cover. All right, let's try how stuff works. Those guys usually know stuff. Oh, look at that. Mac and cheese in a pan. That must be the fortified stuff right there. So who came up with the idea to combine elbow macaroni with creamy cheese to create this simple yet perfectly complimentary concoction. That alliteration just flows right off the tongue. As you might expect, mac and cheese traces its roots to Italy. Oh my gosh, did I not call that prediction? I'm imagining that this noodle-based meal maybe came from Italy. Sound off the air horns, everybody. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna try my best to not butcher this. The Liber de Coquina, or Book of Cooking, nailed it. An Italian cookbook from the 13th century includes a recipe from De La Sanis that foodie historians believe is the first macaroni and cheese recipe. So it does reinforce the historical context that was provided by the Smithsonian, uh, which mentioned that it was based in Northern Europe, specifically in Italy. <laughs> Amateur historians have often credited Thomas Jefferson with introducing macaroni and cheese to the United States. Is that a subtle burn? They did say amateur historians. That probably isn't true, but he did help to make it popular. What did the Smithsonian say about that? A staple of American cuisine, the creamy combo made its way to the United States courtesy of Thomas Jefferson. It's interesting because they, they state it conclusively as if it was fact. 
but how stuff works is all like, nah, bro, your evidence is uh, tenuous at best. Basically, it's a big maybe that TJ here was the one who was responsible for bringing the food over. I guess how stuff works would even go as far to say that it's not a maybe, it's a probably didn't happen. But he did help make it popular. He dined on the dish during his time in Italy and loved it so much that he brought back a pasta maker back with him to the US and served dish at their White House. So he brought a pasta maker, but did he bring a spiralizer. So of course Kraft introduced the Kraft Mac and Cheese dinner in 1937 at the end of the Great Depression called a nourishing one pot meal. Nourishing, you say? Tell me more. So while no single cook can lay claim to the classic macaroni and cheese recipe, everyone has a favorite version of the dish. There's nothing quite like it for warmth and comfort. Aw. How about some fun mac and cheese facts? Cheese fun facts. Okay, this article has immediately gripped my attention. The 10 things that you didn't know about mac and cheese. Whip these facts out at your next dinner or party and be prepared to impress all your friends. That is quite the sales pitch. If you do whip these facts out, please let me know how it goes for you. I'm very interested in the general consensus of what people think of these facts. Mac and cheese has been around for centuries. Um, we knew that already. You guys are a little late to the game. In the 14th century, a cheese and pasta casserole known as macaroons. That's how they say it in Latin. You gotta, you gotta put the emphasis on macaroons. Macaroons! Macaroons! A cheese and pasta casserole known as macaroons was recorded in the famous medieval English cookbook, The Form of Curry. We gotta see what that cookbook looks like. The Form of Curry. It's an extensive collection of medieval English recipes from the 14th century. Originally in the form of a scroll, its authors are listed as the chief master cooks of King Richard II. It is amongst the oldest English cookery books and the first to mention olive oil, gourds, and spice such as mace and cloves. That is so weird. Okay, so lo look at this. This is what cookbooks look like back in the 14th century. Just a freaking dope scroll. I bet Gordon Ramsay has a copy of this framed on his wall. Looks like this scroll was written in the late Middle English on vellum. Um, what is vellum? Vellum is prepared animal skin or membrane, typically used as a material for writing on. All right. The scroll was written in late Middle English on vellum and contains about 200 recipes. The thing about medieval cooking is that the procedures were a lot different back then than they are today. I mean, those were the kind of days where they thought bloodletting was a form of curing disease. I'd be very interested to read what they actually said in the form of curry as far as how to cook. You gotta take a, a gourd and some pasta and elephant tusk and mince it all together. And then you toss it into a big cast iron pot. Place that pot on the cliffside and have the local witch come by and put a little blessing over the pot. Stir for a fortnight and you have the cure for tuberculosis. That's exactly how it was written. Fact number two. Thomas, what the H? There is no H. Maybe that's like the Latin form of spelling. Jefferson served a pie called macaroni at a state dinner. As far as pies go, Macaroni pie does not sound too horribly bad. Fact number three, July 14th is a very important national holiday. In the United States, July 14th has been branded as National Macaroni and Cheese Day. I always love these random holidays. There seems to be one for everything. If you look through the list of holidays that's in June, we have Dare Day, Flip a Coin Day, National Bubba Day, World Bicycle Day, Repeat Day. I said repeat day. <laughs> get it? <laughs> Applesauce cake day. And of course, my personal favorite, VCR day. They just have one for everything. wonder if they have one for German underwater basket weaving. Nope. Doesn't look like there's a day for it. Well, that does it. See you later, everybody. There goes all my hopes and dreams. Okay, so the Kraft Empire came to power during the Great Depression. <laughs> this article makes Kraft sound like a totalitarian dictatorship. I guess when you have a slogan like make a meal for four and nine minutes, it just reeks of ruling the world with an iron fist. And Canadians love their mac and cheese. Ha! As we found out earlier, it's not known as mac and cheese. It's known as Kraft dinner, eh? I'm sorry, that was a bad joke. It even tasted bad coming out. It is the perfect pairing with burgundy wine. <laughs> I wonder if they had like a team of panelists that came together and just sample different wines, different types of mac and cheese. Yes, yeah, so, uh, so we have here is baked mac and cheese paired with a lovely bubbly Chardonnay. <laughs> Zero out of 10. How about this lovely rosé paired with the stovetop macaroni and cheese? <laughs> Last one, sir. How about this burgundy Merlot paired with Kraft macaroni and cheese? 
I approve. Let us take this pairing and rule the galaxy. This panel took place during the Great Depression when the Kraft Empire rose to power. Mac and cheese is an official color. How rad is that? As a kid, I had a lot of Crayola crayons. My favorite color that still stands by me to this day is outrageous orange. But I think that could have been dethroned had I a crayon that was marked macaroni and cheese. And the final fun fact of the day is that boxed versions are becoming healthier. Kraft eliminated uh, artificial preservatives and dangerous dies. Ah, how wholesome. There is nothing I like more than ending things on a positive note. I had mentioned several times that mac and cheese is not known for being the healthiest of meals, but I'm glad to be proven wrong. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Everything in the world that you need to know about mac and cheese. You've learned the history, you learned about TJ and his influence, or maybe influence, depending on if you take that article from How Stuff Works as fact, and that macaroni and cheese is known as a craft dinner in Canada. Those are the facts, those are the key takeaways. There is nothing else you need to know. Thank you for joining, guys. I hope you found this entertaining. There might be more of these coming down the road. Drop a comment, like, whatever, subscribe, I mean, uh, that, or don't. That's it's up to you. I just hope you guys had a good time. Thanks for joining and stay frosty, everybody. Oops, I didn't stop the video. <laughs>